Man, Johnny is just a terrible employee. He's always showing up late. He's leaving early. He should be fired. But little does the person who's saying that know that Johnny's young daughter, she needs 24-7 around the clock care and the mom can't do it alone by herself. Boy, we've been sitting at this restaurant for so long and we ain't been getting no service. Why are these people taking so long? I'm tired of this. I'm upset. Little does that person know that the restaurant has been short-staffed due to a lot of people quitting throughout the pandemic. Man, I I've been teaching my class and there's this one kid. Everybody else is kidding it, but there's this one kid. He is just not clicking for him. Why doesn't he understand what I'm teaching? I know I'm not teaching wrong. He's just not understanding wrong. What's wrong with him? Little does that teacher realize that that kid has a learning disability. Now, I say those three things to say this, that context is so important and so much. And if you don't have the proper context, you can make assumptions that'll be dead wrong. Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Now, you knew they were going to get a hold of this story. They didn't get a hold of any of this story from Lamar Jackson's fun day that he had for the kids the other day. They didn't get a hold of that, but they got a hold of this um, Lamar Jackson, of course, was going back and forth with Bernard Pollard uh, last night on Twitter. And you knew that with that, Lamar is, is you know, there was no winning for Lamar with that. You knew that this was going to be on the way. You knew that this was coming. You already knew what was going to go down the following day from the, all the ESPN, FS1, NFL, all that good stuff. You knew it was coming. So this is a, not, not a surprise for anybody because this is exactly what so many people wanted. Lamar Jackson, he got baited. He got baited. Bernard Pollard has been talking about Lamar Jackson for years. Ever since, the dra ever since draft night, he's been talking about Lamar Jackson for years. And I've seen some people say they feel like he's taking his frustrations with John Harbaugh, his frustrations with the Baltimore Ravens out on Lamar Jackson. And whether that's true or not, hey, only Bernard Pollard knows. But he's been talking about Lamar Jackson for years. But last night was the boiling point for one Lamar Jackson. And most people, in most people's cases, if somebody had been talking reckless about you for a long time, over and over and over and you hadn't responded at all and they kept going over and over and over and you still hadn't responded at all but then when you finally respond most people be like okay hey good job you standing up for yourself we love that not skip bayless and not shannon sharp they said that for lamar jackson with him standing up for himself it essentially makes him look like he was unsure of himself like he wasn't confident uh, in himself. Uh, like he didn't believe in himself as a quarterback. Um, they said that he looked weak. They said that this is beneath Lamar Jackson's MVP dignity. And there were a lot of other things that were said there too. Now, um, some things that they brought up. Shannon Sharp talked about how he agrees with a lot of what Bernard Pollard said as far as Lamar Jackson needing to become a better passer of the football. He said, Lamar Jackson, you need to learn how to throw from the pocket. You need to be a better uh, passer from the pocket. Now, I, I, I'm not one to do this. I don't like doing this, but I have to do this because like we talked about, context matters. Context is everything. If I go back to 2019, that was, of course, Lamar Jackson's MVP season, which was great. But the leader of touchdown passes from the pocket that year was Lamar Jackson. And I believe he actually had the highest, he was the highest rated quarterback from the pocket that year as well. Don't quote me on that, but I'm, I'm pretty sure. But anyway, I do know he was the leader of touchdown passes from the pocket. I mean, he was the leader of touchdown passes the whole season, but from the pocket. So, um, what did he have that year 
that he didn't have in 2020 and he didn't have in 2021. He had a high quality offensive line. 2020, Ronnie Stanley out. 2021, Ronnie Stanley out. But in both of those years, Ronnie Stanley wasn't the only person that went out, but that was Lamar's biggest. His, his, his biggest liability was when his franchise left tackle was taken out of both seasons and the offensive line in both years crumbled. How can you throw from a pocket when you don't have a pocket? Context matters. Shannon Sharp also talked about how with the Baltimore Ravens, with Bernard Pollard brought out how no receiver will, no top receiver will ever want to play with the Baltimore Ravens and Lamar Jackson. Bernard Pollard brought that out. So Shannon Sharp, he said that he agreed with it, and he was like, "Look, we, we've seen all the crazy trades that happen, and there've been so many different receivers available, but no receiver has been like, oh, Baltimore, that's where I want to play it. That that's where I want my destination to be at. When." Have the Baltimore Ravens ever invested into trading for a top wide receiver in their prime? When have they done that? When have they made a move for a top wide receiver in their prime? That's not what the Ravens do. And despite a lot of us wanting them to change their ways when it comes to that, they just simply haven't done it. So with Shannon Sharp back in Bernard Pollard with that, this is why context matters. It is so important. He even brought up, he even doubled down on that and he brought up Hollywood. He's like, man, Lamar and Hollywood, they were boys. They were cool. They were tight. And Hollywood still wanted out of that offense. He still wanted out. So what does that say about Lamar Jackson? Again, this is why context matters. Because Hollywood said himself, when he spoke to I Am Athlete, he said it wasn't Lamar. He said it was not Lamar. He said it's the system. And that system's been a system for a long time before Lamar Jackson was even a thought of the Baltimore Ravens to be drafted by them. They've had issues at the wide receiver position for so long. This is not a Lamar Jackson thing. But Hollywood even reiterated that. And he said today, because somebody said, add some context. Hollywood Brown wanted out, sure. Ravens are a run first offense. Y'all act like he wanted out because of Lamar Jackson. Don't try to create that false narrative. And Hollywood Brown never said anything of the sort. So Hollywood said, facts. The narrative they trying to create on my dog is ridiculous. He can run the show in any type of offense. He just so happened to be in the one he in and doing it at a top level and every wide receiver who ever played with him knows that i take you back to des bryant his comments about greg roman's offense and what it does for receivers i take you back to willie sneed and his comments about greg roman's offense and what it does for receivers i take you back to steve smith senior his comments on Greg Roman's offense and what it does for receivers. I take you back to the Baltimore Ravens and just seeing their history of their offense and their philosophy way before Lamar Jackson was even a thing for them and what it does for wide receivers. Context is so important. With Lamar Jackson... We know, and it's an unfortunate situation, that he does not have the same criteria that a lot of other NFL players have, especially uh, at the quarterback position. We know Lamar Jackson will always be judged differently. Um, the, the measuring stick for him will be a lot shorter than it is with a lot of other people. 
Um, Lamar Jackson cannot do and say the same things that other people can do and say. Uh, people are just waiting for Lamar Jackson's downfall. And of course, with it being his contract year, another contract year. Because last year was a contract year, but then they picked up the fifth year option. So then this year became a contract year again. They're waiting. They're waiting for any single reason to say why the Ravens should not give Lamar Jackson a contract. They're waiting for any single reason for Lamar Jackson to show why he isn't deserving of getting his money. And they're just waiting. More people are going to bait him for sure. More people are going to try to poke the bear. More people are going to try to get a rise out of Lamar Jackson. More people are going to take this, this, this situation right here and run with it. Initially, I was surprised at how quickly this thing picked up steam uh, from so many different, um, so many different outlets. But then I thought about it. I was like, oh, wait a minute. No, 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 no. This is Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson is being watched heavily by everybody. Every, every single thing that he does, every single action that he does, every little thing that he tweets is being watched heavily, heavily by everybody. And so many people, it's all about perspective. It's all about perspective. And the way that a lot of the media is, is viewing Lamar Jackson, they're already looking at him in this negative light. So when they see stuff like this, they're like, oh, well, see, that's what we're talking about. Ah, yeah, that he's immature. Ah, no, mm -mm. he stooped to Bernard Pollard's level. Oh, no, mm, yep, nah, he doesn't believe in himself. Oh, no, yep, mm, no. He's unsure of himself. Oh, no, yeah, mm, ah, yeah, Bernard Pollard was right. He was right. They've been waiting on this. They've been waiting on this uh, for a long time. And last night, Lamar gave a lot of people the satisfaction. Now, it's tough because he is in, and I, I, I really, I tell you all the time, I don't know how he does it. I don't know how he does it because this guy has people 24-7, 24-7. It's, it's literally nonstop. It's every single day, all the time. He has people talking about him recklessly, 24-7, nonstop, 24-7. And a lot of times with a lot of the stuff that a lot of these people are saying, enough times it's incorrect information. But it still continues to be spewed out. 24-7. And about 99% of the time, he don't say anything about it. He doesn't say anything about it. But what's funny is that um, there was a headline, Speak for Yourself, uh, Acho and um, Marcellus Wiley. They, uh, they were breaking down Lamar Jackson and they were feeling like his, uh, he was frustrated with not being on a lot of people's top 10 list when he tweeted that silence is golden. And a headline that popped up across the show during that show um, was if Lamar is actually just being too quiet when it comes to his top 10 ranking and his frustration with it and whatnot. Uh, but then the following day, the whole Bernard Pollard thing happened. So now it's uh now Skip Bell is like oh the Bernard I mean Lamar Jackson should have just stayed quiet he should have stayed quiet so it's tough because every action it has a reaction every action has a reaction and Shannon Sharp I I, I was pretty disappointed in Shannon Sharp because I, wasn't he just getting into it the other day with uh who not Richard Jefferson. Was it Richard Jefferson? It was somebody. And then a couple months back, he was going back and forth with uh, DK Metcalf. And, and it's like, he gives out this advice. Uh, but then with Lamar Jackson, it, the, the advice, it doesn't apply. He can do what he wants, but with Lamar, it, it doesn't apply. And it's just, it's weird. Skip Bayless, wasn't he just going back and forth with, with Stephen A. Smith? 
But that whole little thing, I just and 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 he's like he Skip Bayless is a troll. Y'all know Skip Bayless is a troll. Skip Bayless made his name for being a a troll because he will talk recklessly about so many different NBA players and especially well NFL too sometimes. But most it would be a lot of NBA. He will talk recklessly. LeBrick, Russell Westbrick. And I mean the list goes on. Those are the only two that I could think of off the top of my head. But y'all, y'all know Skip Bayless. He be going in on somebody. But Skip Bayless, he throws out that bait. And he waits and waits. And he's like, all right, let me see what they do. Let me see what they do. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. And they respond, oh, got him. Let's go. That's my new segment. And it works. And that's how Skip Bayless got big. Now, I do enjoy Skip Bayless. I, I do enjoy uh, hearing him speak because he can be funny a lot of times. Um, but it's like you, you, you have to realize what got you to the position that you're at. And you got to realize uh, if you throwing stones from a glass house. And that's why context is so important.